What does it take to keep the world's only working Tiger One in operation? In this video, we're going to find out about the challenges and responsibilities of keeping this rare 80-year-old veteran in action. Tiger 131 hasn't been run since last year. So before it can be run at Tiger Day, the museum team must carefully check it over. Starting a tank is certainly not like jumping in your car and turning the key. This extended first parade procedure takes around two to three hours to complete. To talk me through it are with the museum's workshop advisor, Mike Hayton, a man who knows more than anyone else alive about running a Tiger tank. And Mike, would it would be fair to say, I mean, everybody always says about the Tiger that the maintenance was incredibly taxing. Is it a true fact? It's Absolutely true, yes, in, <laughs> in every respect. So with this doing it, if you, if you didn't do this process, so if you literally jumped in and started it, what, what would happen? Cause um, catastrophic well, failure or something? It, possibly, yeah, and it probably wouldn't start because what happens is during the winter or during the period it stopped, all the petrol drains back into the tanks, so we have to get it all back up into the, into the engine. So the first thing we're going to do, I think, is lift the back decks. Now, obviously, you're going to use a JCB today. Yeah. How would they have done it back in the day, then? Well, um, it says in the manual, four crew to lift the, the back decks. Um, and I don't suppose any of them have got any toes left. I, <laughs> I, I really, it's incredible. Having safely lifted the deck and ensure we all still have our toes, the first task is to disconnect the fans from the engine by putting their drives in neutral. Um, the reason for putting it in neutral is so there's less um, pressure on the engine when we turn it over, so it won't be turning the fans, it's just simply turning the prop shaft and the engine itself. <coughs> I was saying, Mike, this is not obviously not the original engine, the original engine is no, on the deck so, over there. Yeah, so the original engine was what they call an HL210, which was an aluminium blocked engine, and um, it, they had fairly quite a lot of problems with it, um, with overheating and so on. And when the tank came back to the UK, the original engine um, was sectionalised as a teaching aid. And so the tanks sat in the museum for many, many, many years until the opportunity arose to put a, a later engine, which, is, which was actually a conversion anyway. So as the old engines expired, so they were replaced with the HL230, which is what this engine is. Do you know the first thing that struck him, Mike, when he lifted up the back decks, though, was how small it is, comparatively speaking, to what I'm used to on, on vehicles? Yes, it's a fairly small engine. It's very short and, um, and uh, you know, almost it, either the tank was made to fit the engine or the engine was <laughs> made to fit the tank, one of the two. And uh, as you can see, there's absolutely no room between, beside, between the engine and the side of the engine compartment. Over your years of experience, I mean, would you say, we were talking a bit briefly off, <coughs> off air about it, but do you think it's overcomplicated what we always hear about everything to do with Tiger One? I would say out of 10, it's 11. <laughs> that bad. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's a, you, you know, for us uh, in the engineering side of it, we love it because it's, it's just a great big Meccano set, you know, and, um, and it, keeps, it keeps on giving us surprises and, and, and things that we learn every day on it. So. From our point of view, it's, it's brilliant. Um, you know, Shermans are boring because they never go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the next job is to check the levels of oil in the engine. So we know that there's oil in the tank, and we know that there's enough oil in the tank to pump oil around the engine. And in the fan drive gearboxes. So once again, we've got oil on the bottom of this. So again, we know it's safe to run it. And that there is enough coolant in the radiators, which are either side of the engine. Right, the radiators are filled with uh, distilled water mixed with 50% antifreeze. And then we could check the fuel levels. The, the Tiger has four fuel tanks, all together holding about 560 litres. There are two upper tanks, which are below my feet here, and then two lower tanks, which are really well down in the hole, down about there somewhere. Actually, that is one there. The two lower tanks are reserve tanks, and um, each hold 90 litres. We run the tank on just one, um, the left-hand tank. Providing that there's fuel in the upper tank, we know that the lower tank has got 90 litres of fuel in, which is more than enough for Tiger Day. We're tending to run it on Avgas, which is the old four-star fully leaded, um, and mixing it with some modern stuff, which the, the old engines love. And um, you, can, you can hear the difference um, in exhaust notes between the two types of fuel. With the levels all checked, it was time to prepare the engine for starting up. Before this can be done, the engine needs to be turned over a few times. A 
and I was eager to get stuck in myself. I've been told that you need some exercise. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to give you some. Lockdown. <laughs> How's your bad back? <laughs> so what we do to start the tank without using the electric starter is the inertia starter. And what it is, so starting a handle similar to a car, it starts off very slowly and you have to wind up loads and loads of um, gears um, till it gets to the point where you can't stop them. Nothing will stop them if you put a, a big bar in, it'll just shatter to pieces. So once it gets the inertia in these, um, these cogs, so to speak, um, we press this button here and that engages the starter and it turns the engine over about six times. When I say stop, just move away, okay? Let go of the handle and move away. Right. Keep going. Okay. That's it, turn the engine over about four times. The clicking you can hear is the, the backlash on the magnetos. In other words, as the magneto goes over, it goes over and then clicks over to give it a really good spark. So we need to do this about six times. Next. Sorry, how many times? <laughs> <laughs> I stepped aside to let some experienced hands take it from here. And we were soon ready for the next step. So the next job is for one of the crew to go inside, turn the master switch on and then pump the primer pump about 20 times. Um, the driver then gets into, the, into his seat, keeps his oil on the oil pressure gauge to make sure that as soon as the engine turns we've got oil pressure. And uh, then we get to um, people we don't like maybe <laughs> <laughs> to turn the inertia starter and hopefully it'll start. And it, of course it's always started. Yes, yes. <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> now for the moment of truth. And I again found myself heaving the heavy inertia starter to start the world's only running Tiger Tail. You're just getting all the pressure now. This was my first attempt at getting the starter to engage, and it was harder than I thought. So by the time I'd forced it in, the revs had fallen away, and so the engine didn't cleanly start. I was more confident for our second attempt. Okay. But then this happened. And I thought I was going to be in big trouble with Mike. That was loud, Mike. Fortunately, the Tank Museum's Head of Collections, Chris van Schadenberg, was on hand for a little advice. You need to build up a bit more inertia. I think you're starting early in the sequence. OK. Well, if you stand on the side, just give us a shout when you are. Yeah, when you're completely knackered, I'll go for it. <laughs> Third time lucky. Okay, okay. okay. And bingo, just listen to that. Three minutes. Now the engine would need to be run for about three minutes whilst the tank was static. The team were keeping a close eye on all levels whilst looking for leaks or other signs of trouble. With everything looking good, it was time to reverse the tank out into the yard for a further inspection. Okay, Mike, so you said we're gonna leave it out here now for 15, 20 minutes or so. What, what sort of things are you checking out here? Well, first, first of all, we check, obviously, all of the track pins to make sure that these little circlips are on, because if a track pin wears out, we lose a track. So that's part of the first play procedure where we check each one of these pins and also checking the tyres to make sure that they're okay on the rims. 
and also that these nuts are tight because tigers were notorious for those nuts undoing and the wheels flying. I always thought with tiger when they're interleaved, you know, interlocking, it must be really painful to remove yeah. them. It's unbelievable how many wheels you have to take off as well just to mend a puncture. <laughs> so once we've got to the back, another job we do, put our hands there and you can you can feel the air coming out through the fan so we know the fan gearboxes are operating correctly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right in the back. Obviously we, we take this out now and um, put this back in its keeper. We don't need it again now. Once we've started it from coal, this is redundant. Again, nice, nice warm air came out of the fan, so we know the fan's okay. We've done checks around the engine. We know that the engine's not leaking oil or water. Once again, checking the tracks and the wheels. And hopefully before Tiger Day this year, we'll give it a good clean. Now that to me, Mike, looks like the track's a bit low. Is that, or is that just yeah. the way it's positioned uh, at the moment? It depends where it is. If you, with the differential on these tanks, if you just roll to a, um, to a halt, one track will be tight and the other will be loose. And so you'll find the other side will be tighter than this side. So what you have to do is get it on a level ground, same as Chieftain, neutral it, and then adjust the track so that it's missing the first two road wheels. Slack to back, same track, slack to front. We can't finish that phrase, so. <laughs> so, uh, once we checked all, all of these things, obviously we check all of the hatches to make sure that they're secure and that, um, that the tank's ready to go. Brilliant, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Mike, really okay, appreciate thank it. thank you. With everything appearing to be running smoothly, the tank was driven back into the museum, ready to play the starring role of the Tiger Day.